What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Once again, another SWI. If you guys don't know, I used to call these double I SWIs, but yesterday I formally announced I'm going to drop the is it in the beginning with it. So it's just going to be still worth it. I actually, it should be a SWI double I if you think about it. It should be a still worth it in, but we're going to do a still worth it video. We're going to be looking at the iPad mini three. Now this is one of the devices that are unsupported as of on iOS 13, which is pretty sad because, you know, I feel like a lot of people own the iPad mini two and the iPad mini three, but that doesn't necessarily mean this device is completely obsolete just because it's not supported with software. It could very well get security updates or something like that, but you still have to remember that this thing does have the app store and apps are still supported with this thing. So if you download like Temple Run or you download like Jetpack Joyride or something, whenever an update comes out to those things, they're still going to be, you know, getting security updates in that sense. So even though it doesn't get like dark mode or anything, you're still going to get a lot of features. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. That's a pretty important thing I wanted to get off right off the bat. But the iPad Mini 3 is one of those devices that I never owned. I mean, I owned it like I bought it, but I never like used it as a main device. I did use an iPad Mini 2 for a while, but I skipped that to go to the iPad Air. And then from there, I just went on to the iPad Pro. But I found the iPad Mini 3 to be such a strange concept because from the iPad Mini 2, it wasn't like a crazy jump from performance or anything. It was just merely getting the fingerprint sensor, which for a lot of people could have been a very big upgrade. But I do have to accept your opinion. It's a free country, whatever. But let's go ahead and look at this thing, man. This thing came out in 2014, which was about five years ago. This thing came out in October. So this October, it'll actually turn five years. And it's not like a crazy old tablet. I mean, it is in some ways. But in a lot of ways, I mean, there's the iPad Air 2 came out like around this time and that one is still getting supported. It's a pretty good device still. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it still has iOS support and it's very good. The iPad Mini 3, because Apple just didn't really do a spec refresh, they didn't even really do much with it. They kind of dropped the ball in a way. Not really. I mean, it's really hard to describe it. <laughs> Looking around the body, you can tell that we have the familiar design, still the home button, still the touch ID, which I've kind of talked about for like 30 minutes. You have the lightning port on the bottom, a headphone jack, front facing camera, back facing camera, and I'll definitely tell you the build quality isn't cheap. I mean, if you pick this thing up right now, you will definitely feel the quality. It doesn't feel like a cheap device as expected. I mean, I don't think you're expecting this thing to be cheap. Even the iPad mini one didn't feel cheap at all, but you can definitely tell. I mean, they could have done a little bit better job even in 2014, eventually with the iPad mini four, they put the retina screen on it. They made it look a lot better. And even with the newly released iPad mini five, they kept the same design as this one. So if you're looking at them in the front, you'll pretty much not be able to tell a difference at all, but you will be able to see that the iPad mini five does have a better screen, but the five is just such a better device that has way better specs inside of it. And usually I say, you know, specs aren't everything, but when you're talking about a device like this and the iPad mini five, the five is just killer when it comes down to it, to be honest. The screen up front is 1536 by 2048 pixels, so yes, it is a retina display, but with the screen, it does have a little bit of gap between the actual panel and the glass itself, whereas on the iPad Mini 4, that is kind of non-existent. It's kind of the same thing with the iPad Air and the iPad Air 2. They took out that gap in the middle, so it, it just feels like you're tapping the panel, whereas on the iPad Mini 3, the gap is still present, so whether you like it or not, I mean, it's really not that big of a deal if you don't care too much, but in 2019, when we have all these dope panels and all these ammo at this or that, this is an IPS panel, which is not bad, but because of that gap, it just makes it not look that good in my opinion. Now, in terms of software, this thing, I kind of hit on it. It was released with iOS 8.1, which came out forever ago. It is upgradable now to iOS 12.3, but sooner or later, iOS 12.4 is going to come out. So technically, as of me making this video right now, it still has one more, at least one more software update under its belt. It's going to get iOS 12.4, and that could very well be the last update for iOS 12, meaning that's the last update for the iPad mini 3. And that's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's really not uh, the end of the world or anything. And looking at the future, it's not going to get the next version of iOS 13. So that's pretty much where we're ending on in terms of software. I think it had a pretty good run. I feel like it could have extended it had it had at least like the Apple A9 chip or Apple A8 X chip, which the iPad Air 2 had. But in terms of software support, we are pretty much done. But the apps are still supported through the app store. I just wanted to hit on that one more time. Now that pretty much covers the software and the outside of the tablet. Let's go ahead and talk about the performance and also the specifications inside of this iPad. So this thing was released with the Apple A7 chip, a dual core CPU and one gig of RAM, a whole one gig. You couldn't believe it. I know it's crazy. And I'll even tell you, man, even back in 2014, one gig of RAM on a device really wasn't that good. I mean, the weird thing is, and I still don't understand this, the iPad mini 3 came out after the iPhone 6, so the Apple A8 chip was already developed. However, they put the iPhone 5S chipset inside of the iPad mini 3 because that's what was inside the iPad mini 2, and that honestly makes no sense. 
why would you put a Euro chipset into a device that, you know, is still supposed to be, you know, they didn't call it like an iPad mini 2S, they called it the iPad mini 3, the next generation. So they really didn't even improve on speed or anything. And I just found that super weird. And I still find it so weird. Why would they put in a year old chipset into a device that they're selling the year after? It makes no sense at all. They could have, they had the Apple A chips there. And because of that, because this thing has a year old chipset, it has a pretty much the same performance as an iPhone 5S, which also has a dual core CPU and also has one gig of RAM. And I'll definitely tell you, man, I hate to say it, but the iPad mini 3 just isn't that good of a performer. Is it able to get you from point A to point B? Yes, it is. But at the same time, like when you have a device and you're spending this much on a device, even at that time, like you kind of want to get more out of a phone or a tablet or whatever. And I feel like Apple kind of dropped the ball. I feel like they kind of learned the lesson, but they're still kind of doing a lot of weird things now. But if you're going from like switching through apps and you're just opening apps, closing apps, I don't think you're going to notice that crazy of a difference in speed. I mean, yes, you are. But if you're not comparing it side by side to anything, I guess you won't really care. But when you're starting to get into multitasking and playing games and this and that, like you're going to see this device slow down quite a bit. And like I said, I hate to say it because, you know, I like iPads. I don't really have anything against them. But in 2019, because, you know, this is a little breakdown, all the apps and everything that are coming out are pretty much suited for the newer iPhones. I would say from anything from like the iPhone 7 upwards, at least devices with two gigs of RAM. So they're expecting these devices, these app developers to, you know, have these devices that are pretty powerful at the end of the day. And the iPad mini three is just not one of them. Had it had two gigs of RAM, maybe it would be a little bit better. Had it had the Apple A chip, maybe it would have been a little bit better too. But even that it should have had the Apple A X chip as well as two gigs of RAM at the minimum. That would have been a way better deal. And this could have been a lot better. As you can see, just performance just isn't that good. And when you get into gaming, like even on the lowest graphics, which Real Racing 3 and all these other apps kind of just go downscale to immediately you can see that it just isn't that good of a performer it's very laggy very choppy you might be able to finish a game here and there but if you're expecting a lot of performance out of it i don't think you're going to get it from an ipad mini 3 it's kind of sad but at the end of the day i felt like they could have done a better job and i feel like that's one of the biggest downsides of getting this ipad mini 3 is just the performance you know just really isn't that good i feel like you can get a way better performance out of an ipad air 2 which you can probably get honestly for around the same price as an ipad mini 3. the ipad mini 4 still is kind of expensive to be honest but with this one i felt like they could have done a way better job on it so i spent way too much time talking about it at the end of the day to kind of sum up the performance they could have done a way better job in my opinion it just really doesn't hold up in 2019. Now, moving on to the camera, I'm going to spend like 20 seconds talking about it. It has a 5 megapixel back facing camera and a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. It's okay. It gets a job done. If you need to do FaceTime or whatever, you can do it. But again, it's a 5 megapixel camera. It's really not going to be that good, man. But that's really all I want to hit on in the camera. Now, moving on to the battery life side of things. This is probably one of the best parts about this specific device. So it does have a 6,470 milliamp hour battery. I'm not going to tell you what's the best battery life in the world, but it's pretty good when you factor in the age, you know, and considering the fact that this thing is almost five years old, the battery has probably degraded quite a bit, but on the specific unit that I had, I don't know, maybe it wasn't used that much or something, but the battery really hasn't degraded as much as I thought it was going to. I could easily probably get like a day and a half to two days out of it, which is pretty decent for a device that came out in 2014. Like I said, my iPad Pro that I have can last way longer. My iPad Air 2 could have lasted way longer than that too, but I think it's definitely a decent thing. It gets the job done for the most part. Is it the best thing in the world? It can last like weeks and weeks? No, I think it might be a little bit better than my iPad mini 4, but I feel like my iPad mini 2 had like the best battery life out of all the iPad minis that I tested. But I think at the end of the day, you know, it gets the job done. And even though the battery life isn't amazing, it's probably the best part about this specific device if I'm being honest. Now that kind of covers up mostly everything I wanted to talk about. Some other caveats, you know, no water resistance, which I don't even know if any iPad has it. Maybe the iPad Pros of 2018, but it's not getting supported with iOS anymore. You're pretty low on the storage variants. You know, you only have the top one is like 128 gigs, which is still a lot. But with iOS 13, they actually allowed you to get into expandable storage and, you know, plug in an SD card if you have the adapter. Because this thing is not supported with iOS 13, it won't have that functionality. So it might be good for now, but in the future, you might be, you know, in a, in a little bit of trouble if you plan on doing anything. But here's the way I would break it down. And, you know, to kind of answer the question, is it still worth it in 2019? This is what I'll say. Like, 
if this is your only option and you can only get an iPad mini 3 or the other option is you're getting nothing, then obviously get the iPad mini 3. You can get to point A to point B. If it's your only option, you could probably make it last for like another couple months or a year, just depending on until your needs outgrow the iPad mini 3. But if you're spending your own money, I would say do just save up your money at the minimum, buy an iPad mini 4. That thing will get you through iOS 13. So another year of support. And it's not even that slow of a iPad. Like I feel like they could have done better, but it's not that bad at all. Or even what I would recommend you to do is buy an iPad Pro 2016. That was the first iPad Pro that came out in the 9.7 inch model. I would recommend that one. You can probably pick one of those up for less than $200. So I'd probably recommend you to do that. There's a lot of power in that specific device, but just to spend your money on the iPad mini 3, in my opinion, it just isn't worth it. It's just spending too much money on something that's not going to last you that long. And you're probably not going to enjoy using it. You're, there's no Apple pencil support. So if you're into, you know, drawing and stuff, you can't really do that on here either. So I'll leave links for an iPad Pro 2016 9.7 inch model in the description below as well as an iPad mini 4. If you guys want to pick those up, I would definitely recommend it over this thing. Of course, every sale that goes through that links helps support the channel. So it'll mean so much if you guys can pick things up through those links. But man, that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button. That'll mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it'll mean so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I would really appreciate if you guys could check it out. But more importantly, everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.